Hello, hello everybody and welcome to our second video on booleans. As you can see in this video I'm going to show you how to make this little cutout. And we're in polygon mode right now but when I go to sub D mode with the tab key you can see we are holding our geometry perfectly and I'm not sure if we'll cover this or not cleaning up the geometry because we only got 10 minutes. It might take a second video but if you notice over here in my statistics everything that I've created in this model is four-sided. There's no ingons, there's no three-sided polygons, no two, it's all quads. Okay, so let me turn on my wireframe and you can see there. Nice, uniform, all quads, and it was made with a boolean. So let's go ahead and start fresh with a new scene. And let's go ahead and control click a cube. Then let's go ahead and shift click a cube, which will put another cube on a second mesh. Okay, so now let's hit the R key and let's scale that second cube down like so. I'm going to hit the W key to bring up my move tool and I'm going to move this into position. About like that right there. Now we have our two meshes set up for our boolean. Let's select our top mesh or the foreground mesh. Remember the bottom mesh is the background mesh. We'll go to our top mesh, mesh edit, boolean, subtract. And now as you can see we can go ahead and get rid of our cube we made to make our cut with. And now we're stuck with this here and when I hit the tab key, yowzers. Talk about folding up on itself. It surely does that, doesn't it? So if you notice, if we use our loop slice, there's no way I can run a loop slice through here because just the way the, ge the geometry is flowing. So we're going to have to use a different method and we're going to use our edge slice or actually our um, Shift-C, which is just the slice tool, not the edge slice tool. So if we hit Shift-C, we'll go into the tool we need. So first, let's hit Control space and go to our top view. Okay? And let's make a few cuts from this direction. I'm going to hit Shift-C to call up my slice tool. And I'm going to make a few cuts. Like so. Like so. And down the bottom. Now I'm holding Shift-Key every time I want to start a new cut. Like so. Now I can see there's two lines here. I'm going to go ahead and run one this way beside it. I'm going to run one this way beside it. Shift click. I'm going to run one this way. I'm going to shift click and run one this way. Like so. Let's go back to our perspective view now and see what we got here. Okay, looks like we still need to run a couple more cuts along this side. So let's go so we can look at it from the back or the front, whichever you have it oriented. Hit Shift C and let's go ahead and run a couple loops this way. I'm going to run one here and one right on the bottom like that. Now let's run one like that. Okay, let's go back to perspective. Now we have some pretty good slices going on here. If I hit my tab key, it really doesn't hold too well because we still need to make a few more cuts here. So let's step back, take a look at our geometry, and see where else we need to cut this. I'm going to run, let's go back to our back view. I'm going to run one right through here like this. Okay. Let's turn off our grid and work plane so we can see a little bit better. Now we have this geometry cut up, but there's still a couple more places we need to put some loops. Can you see where they're at? You got it right up through here. So let's go back to our top view. Shift C. And let's run a couple right down through there like this. And also on this side. Go back to our perspective view. And now we have those two loops running that way. Now as you can see we're really starting to hold our shape really well. It's a little bit um, not really great looking at the moment. The geometry needs to be a little cleaner. And if you notice, if we go to our lists, we do have four ingons. Okay, we don't want ingons if we can help it. So let's go in here. Let's hit our tab key. Let's hit our C to bring up our edge slice tool. And let's put some edge slices in here. I'm going to put one on this corner to this corner. Hold my shift key. Put one here to here like that. Let's hold our shift key and put one here to there. Shift key here 
to there. Let's go ahead and hit our tab key. Now, as you can see, things are really, really holding tight. And if you look down here, we have managed to somehow to keep complete quads. If we go down to polygons by vertex, you'll see we have 250 polygons, no three sideds, and no no ingons, which is more than four sides. Okay, so there we go. Let's turn off our wireframe, and we have us a really good cutout using booleans. And not only that, we get to keep our geometry flow. Even though this here doesn't look as if it is, all these polygons are four-sided. See? Four. One, two, three, four. Okay? So there we go. There is another method of using booleans. This time we use the square to cut into the side of a mesh instead of cutting all the way through a mesh. Now we could have done the same thing and had this boolean run all the way down and cut a notch out of this whole side and it still would have worked out perfect. The only thing we would have had to have done is add the little cuts that we added up here on this side and would have had this notch running all the way through the geometry. So there you go. You can see in Modo they have done tremendous work with their booleans and I think that they have improved them dramatically, uh, dramatically, dramatically, that's not even a word, dramatically over the past few iterations of Modo and I hope they keep working on them. I think they do because booleans can be such a time saver and so handy but a lot of people don't like to use booleans because it can screw up your geometry so much and if it don't screw up your geometry it's going to take a lot of mesh cleanup. So people kind of like to avoid them. But if, if there was an application out there that really had a good implementation of booleans uh, it would be great because I would use them a whole lot more than what I do because they are easy and they are time savers. And the way Moto's booleans are improving they're getting there, folks. They're getting there. You've seen that this boolean here folded up on itself at the beginning, and it really didn't take much work from us at all to get it to hold its shape. We just couldn't use our loop slices because of the way the geometry was running. We had to use our Shift C, just our regular slice tool, to put our slices in there. So there you go. There's part two of our booleans. I look forward to more, and I hope you've learned something. Thanks for watching.